Hello and welcome to a new South Texas Pride podcast. I'm Ivan Herrera, and today I'm joined by AJ Rivas, a digital influencer, comedian, and creator extraordinaire. AJ, first off, happy Pride Month, and thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's an honor. Believe me, it's an honor. Thank you so much. So I've been following you for a minute on Instagram, but I know you're also big on TikTok uh, from what I've seen. Tell me about how you got started making content on social media. Um, I actually started <laughs> very, um, you know, just doing little tiny things um, with my little cousins. Um, at the time, they were in middle school. They already graduated, though. Uh, but uh, they were like middle school, I think. And um, they actually had like... I, f I I forgot what one of those it was before uh, I think it was musically like I would just like you know do it with my little cousins and TikTok came around and I did one little TikTok video on my cousin's um profile and then I downloaded TikTok and then from there I'm just like oh wow okay cool and that and obviously that was way before TikTok before the elevation of TikTok what it is now um but I was just like doing little skits here and there. I was doing a lot more dancing than what I am doing now. And then that's just pretty much how I started is just doing little voiceovers and dancing pretty much. That's, yeah. that's TikTok for you. I mean, there's yeah. so many dancing on there. I've seen a lot of your videos recently and I'm just like laughing. It's it's addicting. I, I, I can't get on TikTok too much because if not, <laughs> I'll be there all day. <laughs> right. So we started, we talked about your star, but what about your growth? How has your life changed since getting more attention on social media? I know you have hundreds of thousands of followers now on TikTok, uh, thousands on, on Instagram, uh, and I'm sure you have other platforms. How has your life changed since then? Um, It has changed a lot. Actually, like in the beginning of it, I will say 2021, um, I did the, uh, it started with, I mean, I was already doing things before then. But what gave me the boost to want to continue doing what I'm doing now was I did the um, J-Lo challenge from the Super Bowl. And uh, actually, yeah, 2020, no, 2020, oh my Lord, 2020 or 2019, one of those. Anyways, anyways, 2019, this is 2019, I'm sorry, two years off. Um, I actually did the J-Lo challenge, the dance challenge, and I got noticed by J-Lo herself on my Instagram and on my TikTok. And she liked it. And to see J Lo pop up on your new on your notifications, I was like, oh. um, it was very exciting. And that actually gave me the push to continue doing um what I what I'm doing and started doing more of the Selena stuff because obviously I am a Selena fan. And um, yeah, it, it's been nonstop since then because everybody loves it. That's awesome. I, I would also freak out if I saw JLo in my mentions or in my yeah. messages. I'd be like, <laughs> how did you even notice me? And and you mentioned Selena. So I, I want to talk about your character, which is kind of based off of a San Antonian San Antonian Selena Selena. A lot of a lot of different uh, I guess, elements into Jessica 210. Uh, and you also have a lot of San Antonio branding uh, with your character and just your overall, you know, brand. So tell me, uh, tell me, do you want to try any other characters or, or how did this character come to be in general? Okay, so my character, some will say she's funny. Some will say she's relatable. Some will say she's stereotypical. Um, the whole stereotypical thing, let's be honest, it's, we all do it sometimes. Um, not sometimes, most of the time, it's only like, we're just so used to that, right? Especially when you're living here in San Antonio, you know, um, stereotypical Mexican girl, oh, you would like hot Cheetos. Like, I don't think that's offensive. I'm like, I love hot Cheetos. But anyways, back to my character, she's actually, um, I didn't, she, I made her up, obviously, but the stories of Jessica are stories I am close to three of my cousins. I guess you can call us the four Toxicas of the family <laughs> that stick together. Um, my cousin Roxanne, Tapita, and Amy. So all their stories that I've heard as a kid or as a grown-up now in the in the adult circle, um, that's Jessica's story. So they're not just made up stories. Everything that Jessica is talking about, from commissary money to having a boyfriend in jail, having different kids, having your son with the silver tooth. You know, looking all good when your son is in the diaper at H-E-B. You know, it's just like, 
it's like I said, people might get offended by it, but I'm like, that's what I grew up around. Those are the females that I grew up around. And do I think it's bad? I don't think it's bad because I can go anywhere else and not feel at home. But I, if I see a girl like that, I'm gonna feel at home. You know what I mean? So, yes, he has a bunch of what we see here in San Antonio um, with our culture because our culture is different than other places. Um, our Chicano, our Hispanic, Mexican, American, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's totally different here in, in San Antonio. Yeah, definitely. Like I know in, in California, like they have their own version of it. It's very similar to what we have. Um, mm -hmm. And that leads me to my next question. I recently saw you at DragCon. I'm super jealous. Uh, <laughs> and I saw that you were with several people, uh, specifically one that I want to talk about is Selena S. Titties, who was, who was going to join you at RGB Pride. Uh, so tell me about how that went. I know uh, you met some really fun people there. Yes. So let me just start off with Selena Estedes. Um, I love telling this story and she even lives for it too. She's always like, yeah. Um, I was on, I didn't know who Selena Estedes was, right? Before RuPaul's Drag Race, when she walked in that entrance, when, the, when she walked into the workroom, I didn't know who that was. And I was like, she walked in, I was like, who? I, I, it was that moment in the most nice way. Nobody, please get offended. But the beautiful thing we see with the Little Mermaid, you know, all the beautiful little, all the beautiful black little girls seem, look, mom, mom, look, she looks like me. When I saw Selena walk through that workroom, I was like, mom, look, she's me. You know what I mean? Like, I understood her look. I understood her aesthetic. I understood everything in that season while she was in that season. I understood everything and I appreciated it because it was like the best interpretation of Chicanos, of Latinos in general, whether you're Puerto Rican or whatever, we all have that personality, somebody in the family, right? Um, and I was on her live um, one morning and I was like, oh, you know, showy love to you. I'm rooting for you all the way here in San Antonio, Texas. And she read my comment and my name. And she was just like, hey, Jay Reed was the Selena. Oh my God, you're the one that does Selena on TikTok. <laughs> she already knew who I was. And I was like, holy shit. And I already had messaged her about collaborating, right? And um, she was like, send me a message. And I was like, all right. So I sent her a message on Instagram. She followed me back. And now it's, you know, us being able, I saw her when she came to San Antonio. Uh, she performed here. And then when I went to DragCon, and then obviously we'll be, we'll be seeing each other again um, in a few weeks. And it's like a very good, you know, good relationship we have. Um, she's the person you see on TV is the kind hearted person you see on TV is the same person that she is in real life. Yeah, what you see is what you get, definitely. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I love her. Um, I actually, same thing kind of happened to me. I'm, I'm not from San Antonio. I'm actually from the Valley, but same thing happened to me. I saw her and I was just like, this is different. This is something that I've never seen before in, on Drag Race, but I've seen it in my own, you know, everyday world kind of thing. So it really felt, even though she's from California, it really felt like somebody, it, you felt seen as I think the way to describe it. Exactly. Yes. And I mean, me traveling back and forth to California, <laughs> um, you know, uh, these past few months, um, California, specifically in the Whittier area, um, which people in California, if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. That, that Whittier area is almost the same. It's like legit, almost like my neighborhood here in the west side of San Antonio. And being that I've been to the valley before, it's similar. So um, I feel like even though we're just all these miles apart, we all, you know, understand each other. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of parallels. So now I yes. want to talk to you about Pride. Um, it's it's Pride Month right now. Uh, and I see that you're going to a lot of Pride events here in the Valley. But more than that, which is really, really special, you're presenting your own Puro Beep Pride. <laughs> <laughs> The June 9th comedy show is sold out. Congratulations. Tell me Thank what you. led you to produce this event and host this event. It's more than just producing. You're hosting this event. Yes. So I actually have been doing comedy, stand-up comedy for the past year and a half. Um, I worked with many um, comedians, including um, the Hot Comedy Festival, which is with HBO Max. Um, 
And seeing the fact that I've worked with, you know, close friends of mine, I started working with a good friend of mine named Severiano Ovalle. He's a stand-up comedian here in San Antonio, also known as Rocky. Um, he was doing shows here in San Antonio at a bar called Tequila's um, Sports Bar. And he was trying to do a little twist of comedy with musical performance, drag performance, trying to, and this is a straight male. This is a straight guy. He was like trying to do a little different kind of show. And then I got my good friend, um, Chona, Chona Yi. Uh, she does her own comedy shows and she's helped me along the way. And then good friend of mine who started me in comedy, which is Mr. Flo Hernandez, who has been on Showtime. He's the one that got me into comedy and um, that I should do it. And just seeing him doing shows with him, it just really, I'm like, you know what? I think it's time for me to do my own, take everybody's, what I've learned from everybody and make it my own, you know? And I'm like, I want to do a Pride event to where all my comedians and all my entertainers are all LGBTQ, LGBTQ, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, entertainers. You know what I mean? I want it to be an actual like Pride event. So I have um, a lot of sponsors who are either allies or LGBTQ um, owned. And um, the venue that I'm having it at is called Upstage Comedy Lounge. And it's one, well, I was saying this before, it's the only um, comedy lounge here in San Antonio that is black owned. And one of the seven clubs in the United States that is black owned. So uh, not only is it going into being pride, you know, doing it for Pride Month, but that I'm helping a company that is black owned. You know what I mean? And I love that about it. He's fully support. He's an ally. The owner's an ally. Um, so it's just like, oh my gosh, this this show is just going to be a very good show. People are wanting a number two, a, a, a second show. But I'm like, no, you have to wait till next year. <laughs> um, I want people to want it and wait for it. You know what I mean? Um, so it's it's a blessing that I have the following here, the followers here is Antonio who see what I do and understand what I do to be able to buy a twenty five to thirty five dollar ticket. Like I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's really it's really cool. I, I I also like beyond San Antonio, I've seen you are growing in other places. I, I've seen even on Twitter, people have been sharing your videos and it's like nobody even close to San Antonio, but they know somebody who's like that, you know, or they know somebody and you who's retweet similar. it because I every can you retweet those because <laughs> everybody tells me that about Twitter, right? And I'm like I I have not seen anything on Twitter. I'm not really active on Twitter. Let me just say that. Um, I do have a Twitter. Uh, but I'm like, you're not the first person that tells me that about Twitter. And I'm like, well, damn. Well, I guess I might have to just put my name in somewhere on Twitter to see if anything pops up. Because I didn't know people were sharing my stuff. Yeah. And it, definitely, like, look for yourself on Google. Look for yourself on... But th you know what? Sometimes I do want to stress this. There are going to be some people in the comments that don't agree with you. And oh, yeah. sometimes you got to just take those out uh, of your brain. It's not healthy. Yeah. And, you know, even even though they're contributing, it's not contributing for you. It's it's something that they are dealing with. So yeah. I really commend you. Honestly, you've you've, uh, you know, grown a lot just here in San Antonio and definitely going to go beyond that. Um, and it's been such a blast talking to you. I want to thank you for joining me on this South Texas Pride podcast. Where can people find you if they want to follow you? Um, and Jessica. <laughs> so everyone, you can follow me on Twitter. I need to be more active for y'all on um, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. It's uh, A-J-A-Y-Y Rivas, which is R-I-V-A-S. And on Facebook, it's A-J Rivas. Uh, but just like you said, you can Google my name, A-J Rivas, and all my socials will pop up and all my articles will pop up, all the podcasts I've been on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can just like Google my name, A-J Rivas, and um, you'll be able to find me there. Awesome. Awesome. AJ, thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you.